We are here with the Republican nominee for Senate from the great state of Texas, Ted Cruz, just a couple days after his great primary win. Um, how, 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 how was that? I, I know you've had a couple days to let it sink in, but what, what's the feeling in, in your head right now about it? Sarah, it was, it was incredible. It, it really was fantastic. And, and Tuesday night was a victory for the conservative grassroots all across Texas and, and all across this country. It, it's a testament to the thousands and thousands of Republican women and Tea Party activists and grassroots leaders who came together and said enough. We are tired of career politicians in both parties who keep spending money we don't have and growing and growing our crushing, crushing national debt. And Tuesday night astonished all the pundits, astonished all the analysts, and it underscored just how much we can do when conservatives come together and stand united to take back our country. Yeah, there was, um, I watched the live stream on my computer um, from Orlando, and you said something in your um, in your victory speech that you had started at 2% in the polls, and it reminded me, Marco Rubio, the first poll had him at, I think, at 3%. We call ourselves the 3% club that's, <laughs> that, that um, supported him from the beginning. He was below the margin yeah. of error. Um, what, Tell me about the, the mindset of, you know, you start out and you have no chance and, and things start slowly picking up. What, what was it that, that helped you keep going on? Well, look, and Marco Rubio here in Florida blazed the path that we followed. Uh, I mean, that race, I think his race was the most important race in the country in 2010. And it was a very, very similar model where you had uh, an establishment moderate choice who was viewed as the dominant choice, who had all the money, who had all the establishment behind him. And what happened ultimately was Senator Rubio saw conservatives unite in Florida and across the state. And they said, we don't want another go along to get along Republican in Washington. We want someone who will stand against the Obama agenda, against Obamacare, against the spending, and turn around the debt. And, and, and that, uh, his election and y'all's victory in Florida was an inspiration to us in Texas. And, and it helped blaze the path that, that hopefully we will follow in November and, and provide uh, Senator Rubio and, and everyone else in Washington some very needed reinforcements in 2013. Um, what, what was it that you think really turned the tide in your race from going to single digit, who is this guy, to, oh my gosh, he can win? Right. You know, it was an awful lot of, of just hard work and, and reaching out to grassroots activists. A year and a half ago when we started, uh, I began spending 18 hours a day crisscrossing the state, going to thousands of IHOPs and VFW halls and Denny's. And just sitting and, and, and visiting with grassroots activists, with Tea Party leaders, answering their questions, listening to their concerns, and, and making the case why I thought I would do the best job standing and fighting for conservative principles and leading the fight against the Obama agenda. And what started happening is more and more conservatives started coming on board, joining the team, and it started snowballing. But it was one activist at a time, one Tea Party leader, one Republican woman at a time. And Social media was a very powerful tool. Bloggers were incredibly helpful. Sarah, your support over a year ago. I mean, you were a two percenter in this race. <laughs> and, and, and I am grateful for it because it helped spread the message, spread the word. And this is the way elections are supposed to be decided. It's not supposed to be a handful of lobbyists in a back room writing some checks and deciding this will be the next senator. It's supposed to be decided by we the people. And, and I'll tell you, I'm inspired by what we saw in Texas. We saw the grassroots stand up and say, we're going to decide. And, and that is exactly how the Constitution envisions it. Well, I really appreciate that. Um, I've been proud to support you. I met you the first time at CPAC 2011, and then you came back again this year. You've gone to a lot of these events. Um, what do you think is the key for a candidate who um, maybe does need to build that ground game and get the grassroots activists interested? What, what, what were the keys in your race for getting all of us around the country to, to get involved in your race? You know, I'd say two things. Number one, focus on the message. And number two, focus on the people. The message, our country is in crisis. The national debt is larger than the gross domestic product. And we are galloping down the road to where Greece and Italy and much of Europe find themselves. And all over this country, we're seeing a tidal wave 
where the voters are saying we want new leaders who will stand for principle, who will stop spending money we don't have, and it will get back to the Constitution. That message is powerful. A lot of folks focus on all sorts of other things, on the TV ads and, you know, on everything else. Message matters. Ideas matter. Liberty matters. We relentlessly in this campaign focused on standing for liberty, standing for the Constitution, standing for the ideas that matter. And that resonates. And then number two, focus on the people. So many candidates behave as if it's all about them. It's not about the candidate. It is about our nation. It is about the future for our kids and our grandkids. And it's about the people. The reason we saw tremendous success in Texas is not anything we did. It was what thousands and thousands and thousands of activists across the state did. And the more you focus on the people, you ask for their support, you empower the activists, the more fundamental strength a campaign has. We have to treat this as a grassroots insurrection because that's what it is. We are taking down the status quo that wants to keep the spending gravy train going. And the problem is it's threatening the future of our country and, and we can't let that happen. The stakes are too high. If you focus on the message and you focus on the people, that's how together we retake this country. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, again, we're here at the Red State Gathering with Ted Cruz, who I am can't wait to be able to officially call you Senator Cruz. And congratulations on all the hard work. And on behalf of somebody who is a taxpaying American, I'm really, really happy that you are going to be going to D.C. And, and, and doing what we need to get done. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for your relentless voice for liberty. And, and thank you for the support and encouragement of, uh, of everyone that, that, that follows your blog. And, and, and I would say to everyone, please come join us online, if you haven't already, at tedcruz.org. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Join us on Twitter. If you can support the campaign financially, we would welcome the support and help us spread the message. This is all about retaking the country and defending liberty. And together, we're going to take our country back. All right. There you go. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.